The following production is presented by League Info Site and the Credit Union Broadcast Experience, QTV. Hello, I'm Sean Wolbert with the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight. This presentation is a continuation of last month's coverage of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's Loan Originator Compensation Amendment to the Truth in Lending Act, or TILA. One of the reasons Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, or the Dodd-Frank Act, was to reform industry practices for loan originator qualifications in compensation after the mortgage crisis and rescission. In last month's CU Compliance Connection session, we reviewed sections of the loan originator compensation rules for arbitration agreements and single premium credit insurance that go into effect on June 1st this year. The loan originator compensation requirements we will discuss today go into effect on January 10th, 2014. Truth in Lending already prohibits basing loan originator's compensation on any of a transaction's terms or conditions for a loan secured by a dwelling by the Dodd-Frank Act, and it clarifies this and strengthens the truth in lending definitions. Based on the amendment, compensation is clarified to include salaries, commissions, and any financial or similar incentive. The term of a transaction is defined as any right or obligation of the parties to the credit transaction. This means, for example, that the loan originator cannot receive compensation based on the rate of a loan. The rule prohibits compensation based on, among other things, interest rates, annual percentage rate, collateral type, or the existence of a prepayment penalty. The new rule further states that no loan originator shall receive directly or indirectly compensation in an amount that is based on a term for a single transaction, the terms of multiple transactions by an individual, or on the terms of multiple transactions by multiple individual loan originators. To prevent financial institutions from evading the rules when paying loan originators, the CFPB has written the final rules to prohibit compensation based on a proxy for the term of a transaction. The rule also further clarifies the definition of a proxy to focus on whether the factor consistently varies with the transaction terms over a significant number of transactions. And the loan originator has the ability, directly or indirectly, to add, drop, or change the factor in originating the transaction. Additionally, the final rule prohibits compensation from being reduced to offset the cost of a charge in the transaction terms. This practice is often called pricing concessions. However, the final rule does allow a loan originator to reduce their compensation to cover certain unexpected increases in estimated settlement costs. It is important that I point out that an individual loan originator may receive compensation under a non-deferred profit-based plan that is determined with reference to the profits of the originator as long as the compensation is not directly or indirectly based on the terms of the originator's transactions and the aggregate compensation for the period does not exceed 10% of the originator's total compensation or the originator closed 10 or fewer transactions in the last 12 months prior to the date that compensation is determined. Loan originators may also be paid bonuses, such as retention bonuses, budgeted for in advance, or a performance bonus paid out of a bonus pool that is set aside at the beginning of the credit union's operating budget. However, awards for service, merchandise, trips, or similar prizes must have the cash value of the award factored into the calculation of that 10% total compensation limit. In the same manner that the Dodd-Frank Act clarified the terms of a transaction under Truth in Lending, it also codifies TILA's prohibition on dual compensation. When a mortgage loan originator receives compensation directly from a member in connection with a mortgage loan, they are not allowed to receive compensation from any other person or organization in connection with the transaction. The Loan Originator Compensation Rules include additional licensing and registration requirements. Truth in Lending Section 1026.36F 
requires that loan originators comply with state and federal licensing and registration requirements, including any requirements imposed by the SAFE Act requirements. The rule mandates that the credit union ensure that individual loan originators who work for it are licensed or registered in compliance with the SAFE Act and other applicable laws. As with many new regulatory requirements, this one contains a mandatory training element. Periodic training must be provided to loan originators that is sufficient in frequency, timing, duration, and content to ensure that loan originators have the knowledge of state and federal regulatory requirements that apply to the employee's loan originator activities. The training must take into consideration the particular responsibilities of the loan originator and the complexity of the mortgage loans with which they work. The training may be provided by the credit union or any other person or organization that they may utilize, and they may utilize workstations, the internet, teleconferencing, and other interactive technology and delivery methods. The new loan originator rules also expand the requirements of the SAFE Act by requiring that the credit union's name and NMLS, or State Registry Organizational ID, and the loan originator's name, NMLS, or State Registry Organizational ID, be included on TILA-covered loan documents. The rule further explains that this requirement, stating that the organization and originator's names and IDs must be included on each covered loan document. The loan originator compensation requirements from the CFPB that amend Regulation Z are effective January 10, 2014. Due to the complexity of the requirements of this rule, it will be important for all departments of the credit union to work together for implementation to be successful before the effective date. We have come to the conclusion of reviewing the CFPB's loan originator compensation rules based on the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Please stay tuned to the Compliance Connection for detailed reviews of additional new CFPB regulatory amendments and rules. Thank you for joining me. I'm Sean Wolbert with the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight, only on Cube TV. Thanks for watching the number one compliance program for the credit union community. Stay tuned.